The off-season this year has been quite short. Um, it has been more complicated than possibly it, it would have been in, in previous years, uh, mainly because we, we want to make sure that we do the best job with the car possible, and uh, that just means all the timescales get compressed. But I think I've been incredibly impressed how everybody's managed to, to do such a good job. One of the main challenges we faced uh, through the design period of this car was a very late decision on what power unit we would be using. We did what we could in terms of the packaging of the car without knowing the power unit, but ultimately it led to a very compressed design cycle. And I think the, the guys, the drawing office in particular, did a fantastic job in turning that around and then manufacturing, reacting to what was a, a very short lead time. Yes, it was more challenging. It was a little different from what we've been used to, yet, yes, we'll, we'll surmount the challenge, survive and present the car uh, for the winter tests. By having less time, we make more compromise in terms of choice and how what type of system we put on the car. Ultimately, the decision was to stay with the power unit that we used last year, which did help to catch time back up because we didn't have a familiarisation period with a new power unit, so the installation requirements that had caused or challenged, etc. Packaging the car around a, a similar power unit is, is definitely easier than starting a new relationship with a new engine supplier and with, new, with the new uh, packaging requirements and so on. It gave us uh, some experience of what's been in there before so that we were able to deal with what would have been otherwise questions back to another supplier. We had a much better understanding of what to pursue and chase and how to deal with it. The engines are very different, even though you, you assume they're all designed to the same regulations. They've all got different lumps and bumps on them. They stick into the gearbox or the chassis by different amounts. They've all got different cooling requirements. Some have big charge air cooler requirements. Some have big water cooling requirements. Some have got big batteries, small batteries, large turbos. So a, a late change to a different engine is, would, be, would be a very major upheaval. Really, there's been no regulation changes of any significance over the winter. Now, there's a minor detail where the, the wastegate cannot now join into the main tailpipe. Um, aerodynamically, it's, it's trivial, slight repackaging around the rear wing pylon, but uh, that's about all. The regs for this year are slightly different around the exhausts, um, but that's one of the, the only real changes. So hopefully it'll make the, the engines louder. Um, we'll see at the first test on Monday. When you look at the back of the car, there will no longer be one big exhaust pipe. There'll be another one or two next to it, depending on who's designed it. They might be a little bit louder. I don't think it'll be much louder. In terms of performance, I don't think there'll be much in it. The, um, the, the existing regulation is still pretty um, tight in terms of what you can do with exhaust gases. So I think there'll be little performance to be had from it. it actually, it might be a bit slower because you've got the weight of some more exhaust pipes to deal with. At the end of the day, we're only judged relative to our opposition, aren't we? So we'll see how we get on. Last year was, was a difficult start to the season. We had some handling issues um, through some different philosophies we tried over the winter. They didn't work out, um, but it was a very useful exercise. Often, if you have a good handling car, it's, it's difficult to learn. If you make some mistakes, then you can really learn from those mistakes, and, and that's exactly what happened last season. And we put in a phenomenal effort through the year. Many skilled people put in a lot of dedicated hours, and we are judged relative to the front-running car. If that's us, fantastic. If it's not, we've got a lot of work to do. Well, it's certainly more competitive. The car started off reasonably reliable last year, but we, we did lack some performance, and there were some minor gremlins that we needed to get on top of. And like all these things, you think they're minor, but once you've got on top of them, you find more doors open to you, and you quickly find more performance. So, so far, the, the numbers from CFD and Wind Tunnel are are pretty encouraging. Certainly I've been incredibly surprised that we've managed to get so much out of this set of regulations, which as I say is fairly, has been fairly stable. Um, it's, it's a function of, of everybody understanding the car that we had last year, but also I think identifying the problems that we had and, and really focusing on those. And I think we've made some, some fairly big steps forward. To be satisfied with a number from Aero is, is a big word. We are never satisfied, <laughs> I would say. My hopes for RB12 are that uh, it continues 
the sort of same rich vein of form that we had with, with RB11. And obviously there were um, not necessarily the results that we'd hoped, but I think we, we all knew that we had a good, a good foundation in the car and the chassis. Um, I'd like to see that continue. Make sure we go to Australia in the best state we can be, well prepared, get the most out of the car we can at each race, and uh, put ourselves in a position by which we can either win it, challenge for a podium, or benefit from anything that happens around us. RB11 is quite a very good base in terms of performance. We have an improvement in all area for, about this car for RB12, and we will try to materialize the results on the track, but it's very difficult <laughs> to have more than that. Well, as far as the RB12 is concerned, I, I kind of hope that we can win some races. It sounds a bit far-fetched after last year's performance. But I think this year, that, you know, I think, I think you know, power-wise, hopefully we can make a bit of a step and that will, that will level the playing field a bit. What we've really tried to concentrate on with this car is getting a cohesive package where all the parts, the suspension, the chassis dynamics, the aerodynamics, they all work together in harmony. We've adopted a philosophy with, with the car of trying to design everything front to back. And I can look around the car and see evidence of that working everywhere. I quite like the colour. That's a different one for you. I do like that. I think it's coming out absolutely fantastic. There is a, a change in the regulations of the tyres and the way the tyres are used, and indeed the tyres themselves. We are quite kind on the tyres. Um, we suffer less from degradation than some of our rivals. Uh, so it's, it's an extra area that hopefully we can um, use the performance of the car to, to benefit from. Benefit from. Um, hopefully, not all the teams will converge on the same solution, so we'll end up with different tyres at different races, which will be, will be exciting. I think we've seen in, in the past when we had tyre wars and where people could choose their own tyres, that sometimes people made bad mistakes, which always shook up a races. So I, I hate to say that you know, we would do that, but uh, it's always nice to see races where things change a bit. So hopefully it'll add a, a sort of needed bit of uh, excitement into the racing. There can be seen to be a desire to take softer and softer tyres, yet with a wear limit that's, should we say, imposed via Pirelli, it's an interesting challenge. And it'd take a while, I think, for everyone to evolve to not common solutions, but similar solutions. The new tyre rules and the, the possibility to make a, a choice in terms of tyre for each race, as an engineer, is very exciting and it can give you an advantage compared to others. After we have to see if everybody is choosing the same thing than us. It will be not advantage, but it could give us some quite interesting race if we have a different choice. It might give a few teams the opportunity to sort of roll a few dice at a few events where you might go, actually, actually our tyre deg is potentially better than our, than our position, typically at these kind of circuits, and that we're going to roll a dice and go for a racier tyre and see whether we can make it last. I don't think it's going to change the World Championship, but it might give you know, the odd team a chance of, um, you know, putting a fast one on the, some of the bigger teams. So it's not a bad idea. We're all going to be feeling fairly nervous and, but also very excited. It's always exciting to see a new car that you've been working on for the last few months come together and finally go out onto track. But the, the nerves come from uh, really what the drivers are going to say about it. And, they're not shy about telling us what they think about the car, so hopefully there'll be mostly good comments. Optimistic, a bit tired, and really looking forward to getting going. The morning of the first test is always a very exciting time. Um, the cars finally come together, and it's probably, hopefully, fired up at least, at least a few days before then. And in terms of the performance of the car's concern, you only really get a feel from what the drivers say. Um, and the error data that, the, that starts to come back. There's no point looking at anyone else's lap times. You just know where you are. You know how much fuel you've got on the car. Hopefully you, you have a big smile on your face. I think you know if the car's rubbish or really good. By the end of the first day, we'll have got the data to see whether the car seems to be performing as we expect it to. If the answer is yes, it is, then that's the first box ticked. And then it's down to the usual development cycle.